Well, good evening. It is once again time for Gethsemane 7 at 7, uh, so we can bring you some hope and encouragement. We want to just be a blessing to you. So Sunday, uh, our youth pastor, Adam, preached an awesome message about going through the fire. And he made a wonderful statement that I thought was really awesome. He said, you are who you are because of the one who has made an investment in you. And man, I thought that was just such a powerful, powerful statement. You are who you are because the one who made an investment in you. Now, God has made an investment in you. And I think that is absolutely phenomenal that he would spend so much time and make an investment in us. And so think about this, because his message is about going through the fire. It was called through the fire. And, you know, right now, I think in America, we are victims of all arson you know uh, when i was praying about what we need to what i needed to speak on or what i was going to speak about i kept hearing an old song by billy joel now i don't listen to secular music anymore uh but i was listening to a song i heard this song come to me by billy joel and said we didn't start the fire you know and Right now, man, there's some things going on in the earth. There's there's a war going on, and we we didn't start the fire, uh, and neither did God. So I'm going to say He didn't start the fire. Uh, we, you know, when you look at the uh, story that Adam talked about, the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how the king was furious over them not bowing down, and I love that about them. He got mad because there were some people that just wasn't going to give in to him. And he was king. (laughs) Think about it. He was king. And so he heated the oven, the stove, the the fire up seven times hotter than it's ever been. And he threw them in there. And man, you know, he was he was so furious with them that he was determined that they were they were just going to die. I mean, think about a fire that hot anyway would have probably burned them up in a matter of seconds and they wouldn't have felt anything anyway but i mean that was just how furious he was but god didn't start that fire it was king nebuchadnezzar and his pride and his arrogance started that fire you know we're going through things right now in america it it, it, maybe in even your own personal life where others others other people's decisions have caused a fire to start you know uh when you think about that, you know, you, you, we do live our life based on decisions made by other people sometimes. And sometimes those decisions aren't from God. And we have to deal with them. And we have to go through some things because of that. Now, you may be going through some, th- through some things because of your own admissions or because of your own uh, decisions that you've made. But think about this. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace... Not God did not wait for the fire to come down a little bit before he went in there with them. He went in there in the hottest part of the fire at the hottest time of the fire. I mean, he went in there and he was in there dancing and celebrating with them. I believe that just like Adam said, they were worshiping God because their confidence in God would not be moved. Their confidence in what was going on. They, they weren't looking at the circumstances of their life. They were looking at what God was going to do for them, what God was going to deliver them out of. And I mean, could you, you know, the conversation that they had in there, I, I would think that it was, you know, he, he, I would imagine that, that, that Jesus, which I believe that was Jesus in there, was asking, so, so what do you guys think? I know we're in the fire. Guess what? It's not going to burn us. It's not going to harm us. You're going to come out of this thing as though nothing ever happened to you. You're going to come out of the fire. You're not going to smell like smoke. They're not even going to know that you were in the fire. I mean, that's the deliverance of our God. James, in chapter 1, said it this way. He said he, he said that we're to consider it a pure joy when we face trials of many kinds. Because we know the testing of our faith develops perseverance. Again, God's not testing your faith. The devil's only trying to prove you to see if what you believe is true. Uh, if for you, will you back down? Will you will you give up? Will you quit? You know, and it, it's it's when you don't back down and you don't quit and you understand that faith works every time, no matter what. Faith works every time. 
And not only that, but Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. It doesn't matter where you're at, what the fire is, what's going on with you. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. He is never going to leave you. He is never going to, you know, like I said, if he's made that kind of investment in you, he is not going to not be there with you. He isn't going to let you, after making such a great investment in your life, he is not going to sit there and not be a blessing to you. Think about it. He's not going to sit there and just go, well, let's see how long they can take it. <laughs> no, God, God doesn't do that. He gets right there in it with you and he says, I'm going to bring you out of it. No matter what you're going through right now, no matter where you're at right now, no matter where you may think you are in the fire, he's going to bring you out of it. And it's going to be as though nothing has ever happened to you. That's what he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they had an old covenant. They were under the old covenant and we have a better covenant right now. We have a better covenant founded on better promises established by the blood of the lamb, the, by the blood of Jesus. Jesus paid the price for us to come out of the fire, not smelling like smoke, not being harmed. We have the victory before we go into it. We have the victory while we're in it. And we have the victory when we come out of it. And that is the will of God and the plan of God for our life. Now, just like I said, we didn't start the fire and neither did God. You have an enemy, and that's the evil one, the devil, who would love to destroy your faith. He wants to destroy your confidence in God. He wants to, if he could, break you so that you'll give up on the promise of God for your life. Well, you don't have to do that. You stand firm in the promise of God. And I promise you, God will never let you down. He will never back away from his promise, so you shouldn't either. And tell, we're told in Hebrews that we're not like that who shrink back. And I'm glad we're not like that who shrink back. Well, my time is up and I want to thank you guys for joining. God bless you. We love you and have a wonderful, wonderful time.